Good day, friends. Today we are going to have a look at the model of a cone and its sections. Now, we have talked about cone, we have seen a cone and you know what a cone is. You would say something like an ice cream cone. We have also seen a model of solids at that time we saw a cone. But now we are going to have a look, look not intuitively but mathematically. So what is a cone mathematically and what are its sections? The sections are always by a plane in mathematics. So we will take its sections also. We are not going to verify any results. We are going to just understand what a cone means mathematically and how to have a look at and understand its sections. Now this is what we would normally call a cone. It has a point here, a curved surface and a circle at the bottom. Well, that's alright, intuitively we call this a cone. Mathematically, it is precisely this. This circle at the base, we take here, there is a circle in the groove. And what happens is, mathematically what happens is this, that there is a line which always, which always keeps on the center and also passes through a fixed point. So the line moves like this. And while it moves like this, what it creates is this surface and that surface is cone. So we saw that on the solid, this paper cone, we see now how it is generated. This is the base circle. We take a line through the center of the base and perpendicular to the plane of it, the circle, and a fixed point on it, which we had there on the pole. <clears throat> now here is a line which passes through the circle. Always this end is on the circle. And it passes through this fixed, this point is fixed. And it passes through this point also. It passes through the other point also. Now it's, when it completely goes through it, you will have the surface which I just showed you on the paper model generated by this line. So that is a cone. Now uh, two things about the cone which you should remember. Mathematically a cone is hollow inside. It is not like this. This is solid. It is not like that. This is just to show the surface. But when you can see that when this line moves, the inside part is not there at all. Only this outer portion is formed. And so only the outer surface is formed and it is hollow from inside. It is like this. It is hollow from inside. And it's like this. Well, okay. So that is a code. So that was one thing to, remem to rem be remembered. That it's only the surface that is the cone. And the second thing is that we are talking about this line. We are talking about this line. The line through the center of the circle is called the axis. The fixed point is called the vertex of the cone. And the line which moves and forms the surface of the cone is called its generator. Now, this generator and the axis, they are both lines. They go infinitely downwards and upwards, both of them. So now just see what ha would happen when this line moves here. The upper part of the line will move on this side. This will move on this side. This line will move on this side. And then when this line goes behind, the lower part goes behind, the upper part forms the upper part. So when this part of the cone is generated, in the upper one, this part is generated. When the back part is generated in the lower part, the front part is generated in the upper part. And in general, you get two parts, the lower part and the upper part, and they both together form a cone. Many people call it a double cone, 
Well, that's okay. It's not really a double cone. The whole of it is a cone. And we have one part of the cone and the second part of the cone. You can call it upper and lower. Or if you put it like this, left and right, whatever way you want to call it. So it would look like this. So when the line generates, you can see that when it is in front, the upper part of the line goes at the back. When it is to the right, the line goes to the left, upper part goes to the left and so on. So when this part is generated by the line in the lower part, the black part is generated by the same line. And therefore, so when the whole cone is generated, you have a double second part at the top. Okay. So that makes it a cone, its section, its uh, various uh, parts, the vertex is generated the axis, and now to the sections. The sections are always by a plane. So we take a cone and cut it by a plane, and whatever we get is a section. What are the possible sections? One we have seen already, that here is the cone, and its axis will be this will be the axis. And now you will see that if you take a plane which is perpendicular to the axis, it is this circle. So if you take the axis and a plane perpendicular to it, you will get a circle. Now, instead of taking the plane perpendicular, like the axis is through this, instead of taking plane perpendicular to it, Suppose I tilt it like this, then it will cut, when I tilt it like this, it will cut the entire cone like a circle, but it will not be circular, it will be something a little longer, and this is what we call an ellipse. So if you plane is perpendicular to the axis, you get a circle. If it is tilted and oblique, then you get an ellipse. Are these the only sections? No. These are sections which have connection with the axis. And now, let us take a section. You can see that this is the generator. In fact, every line is a generator, but I am referring to this generator because <clears throat> we have this section here. And this section <coughs> you will be able to see that it is parallel to the generator. And therefore, if you take a section parallel to the generator, you get it something like this. Now, because it is parallel to the generator, this is the generator. <coughs> the section is parallel to the generator, so it will not cut the upper part. There will be only this much, like an ellipse or a circle, and we call it a parabola. It is curved here, it gets slightly broader and broader and goes to infinity with the cone. So that is a parabola generated by, I mean obtained by a section parallel to the generator, as you can see here, generator section. <coughs> okay. Now, if you take a section which is parallel to the axis, um, now here is a cone. We talked about the generator generating upper and lower parts. You can see here, this is the fixed point. <coughs> and here is the circle. This is the line. The line moves so that it is always on the center and passes through this point. And you will see what we were uh, trying to see on the other model, that when the uh, lower part of the line moves here, the upper part moves behind. When the lower part moves to the right, the upper part moves to the left, and so on. And you get the two parts. And now I was talking about a section which is parallel to the axis. Now the axis is to the center here, to the center there. And if we take a section, which is parallel to the axis, something like this.
something like this. You will see that it will cut both the parts, the lower part and the upper part of the hole. What shape we have, we cannot see here. The only thing we can see here is that it will cut both the parts. All right. Now, let us see how it will cut both the parts. Here is a cone, one part of the cone and the other part of the cone. And you, will, you can see, I have to hold it here, I am taking a section now which the axis is through the center perpendicular to the base. And here is a line which is perpendicular to that, I mean parallel to the axis. And I take a section which is parallel to the axis from here. Now you will see that if I cut like this, it will cut both the parts. Here also you will see that it will cut both the upper and lower parts. And what is the shape? The shape is this here. As you can see, it is the purple shape here and the purple shape here. Or in other words, if I keep it facing you, it will be like this. The section is to the scale parallel to the axis and it cuts in this purple, purple shape and purple shape. There are two branches to this curve. This curve is called the hyperbola. So hyperbola it looks like a parabola. It's very different though, but it has two branches. And now the last part, these are the special conic, uh, I mean sections, the circle, ellipse, parabola, hyperbola and uh, what else these four we have done now it may happen that our section of the plane will pass through the vertex now this is the cone suppose the section i take the section like this it will the section uh, now i cannot uh, make it go through but if it goes through, you can see that it will go through the vertex and it will cut the upper part in this line, this part here, it will cut like this. One line here and the other line there. And these two lines, it will cut like this. And these two will form intersecting lines. They will intersect at the vertex of the core. So, uh, if the plane pass, passes to the, uh, I mean, its path uh, passes to the vertex, then you will get two intersecting lines. Suppose it passes to the vertex and is perpendicular like this, there will be only one point. So, one point is also a conic. But these are very special cases when only when you your plane passes through the center and so we call them degenerate conics. So two intersecting lines and a point are also conics but degenerate conics. Well, thank you. Um, we have tried to understand mathematically the cone with the model and also understand what the conics look like. Uh, I forgot to show you this one model. We have already talked about ellipse, but this is a model where you can see that the yellow portion is the ellipse and it cuts obliquely all the generators and opposite generators also. Okay, thank you.